Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to Levy in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to Levy in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth come to the United States and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a talk show program featuring the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. Created by Think Tank Hawaii and Kingsfield Law Office. We invite renowned immigrants to discuss their life stories, immigration adventures, and their contribution to the United States. Today's guest is our good friend, Professor Jianping Wang from the University of Minnesota. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Chang. Yeah, good with you. Well, we are thrilled to have you. And we don't have a lot of scientists on our show. And you are such a prominent scientist. You have a very long career and extremely accomplished scholarship and education. And uh, I'm uh, completely astonished when I read your bio. But now I'm going to offer our audience a shorter version of your bio. And please correct me if I pronounce any of the words wrong, because I'm a lawyer, and some, some of these uh, STEM vocabulary is quite new to me. No problem, yeah. yeah it's great honor with you and uh, with this program, yeah. Thank you, Professor. Professor Wang, Jianping Wang, is a distinguished McKnight professor, University Professor and Robert Hartman Chair in Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Minnesota. Professor Wong is the inventor of the rare earth free iron nitrate magnet, several magnetic recording media and spintronic devices for memory and computing application, and a high moment magnet nanoparticle and a large aerial magnetic biosensor for medicine applications. Those are sounds extremely sophisticated, but honestly, Professor, I have no idea what are they. Uh, you may, perhaps we can have your uh, explanation a little bit later. Professor Wang, you received INSIC Technical Achievement Award in 20, uh, 2006 for the demonstration of the exchange coupled composite magnetic media. You received the 2019 Technical Excellence Award from Semiconductor Research Corporation, innovations and the discoveries in nanomagnetic and novel materials that accelerated the production of magnetic random access memory. You host 72 US patents that have been licensed to six companies. You are the co-founder of Nitron Magnetics Inc., Zepto Life Technology LLC, and Universal Magnetic Systems uh, see. Professor Wong has published more than 400 articles and a seven book chapter. Professor Wong was a recipient of the Outstanding Professor Award for his contribution to undergraduate teaching in 2010. Professor Wong graduated 37 PhD students and trained 13 postdoctoral fellows after he joined the University of Minnesota. Professor Wong has been elected to the National Academy of Inventors in 2022. Professor Wong is also a fellow of IEEE and APS, American Physical Society. This is just a very uh, condensed, a shorter version of a bio. The Professor Wong has to admit, this is absolutely astonishing. But I want to ask you, uh, you have four identities. You have your professor, each year the advisor, obviously, and you are an inventor, and you have 72 patents, and you are also entrepreneurial, and you have three companies under your name, and you are also an engineer. So which identity you think is most important to you? Yeah, first, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chang Wang, and I'll thank uh, you know, the technical support like Mark put me on this program. Yeah, it's a great honor to uh, be with uh, the audience and all the people. Yeah, I answer your question. Uh, it, it's hard to see that, yeah. I, I really uh, value my role, uh, you know, if, if I really can do something along that line. 
even better that is as educator right as a, mm -hmm. you know as a professor i can get chance to uh, train and teach and pass down my personal experience to the young student you know especially college student and then come to the you know phd research uh, student yeah so th that that's joy one of the most yeah <laughs> thank you yeah. we are very lucky to have you here at the university and uh, uh so we, i have so many questions i want to ask you and uh, first and foremost uh, at some point you worked for chinese academy of sciences and uh, institute of physics that is the same institute my father worked so by Pure serendipity. Now I'm basically interviewing my father's colleague, and that I consider that extreme honor and privilege. Thank you again to be on the show. Uh, now we want to talk about your American journey. You came to the United States from Singapore. This is, is really rare because most people go to Singapore probably will settle there. It's uh, one of the most livable cities a country uh, in the world, extremely beautiful, extremely open. And uh, so uh, may I ask why did you move from uh, Singapore to Minnesota? Yeah, that's a definitely a big question and uh, this big decision we made. Uh, you know, you, you look at the weather wise also, you can, people will be surprised to move from very uh, warm and, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of city country to Minnesota, people scared by winter. But I, I, I and my family, you know, we made that decision. It, it's not large and uh, light, and uh, we, we, we really value or uh, appreciate all the, you know, good, good, uh, good experience in Singapore. The seven years, we we met so many wonderful people, and uh, the, the life there is also wonderful. Uh, by by end of the day, the opportunity show up. University of Minnesota has this uh, faculty position. You know they recruit people, and uh, my background matched well. <laughs> I, I didn't know that until I talked to Professor Jack Judy and uh, Randall Victoria and a couple of other colleagues later on. You know who were at the University of Minnesota, and uh, yeah, it's they, they really feel my background fit well, and uh, and then I came here for an interview and then uh, talked to people around, feel, oh yeah, here we have nice people. And also Minnesota is very famous on magnetic research. Oh. Uh, we have a good team here and uh, also have industry and also education. <laughs> so one word that I can summarize opportunity. Yeah, that make uh, me, but although there's a risk, there's uncertainty, move from very stabilized, uh, uh, life you know in singapore and to some place again to start uh, from scratch yeah uh, yeah but but i i think it's good yeah so it's a wonderful experience and uh, opportunity for me for my family for my kids i think uh, it's open up well yeah thank you very much i i think you made the right decision and uh, minnesota couldn't be happier to have you here and which year was that 2000 2001 2002 that's 2002. Year two. yeah yeah, this uh, one year earlier uh, than I moved to Minnesota. I came here in 2003. So uh, you, you've been in the United States uh, about 20 years. And uh, what, what's your, well, may, maybe the, this question is a little bit of mood, but what, what excites you about Minnesota or uh, in the United States, generally speaking? Uh, I feel... The, the, the one word I can summarize, it's hard to, you know, summarize in simple way, but uh, if just need pick up one, one word, I think is uh, you can buy a lot of things, you know, mm -hmm. there's no much boundary <laughs> in terms of you explore new things. Yeah, uh, that I feel very, very exciting. Although in Singapore, I can do a lot of good things. That's true. Uh, you know, I, I lead a bigger group and I got a lot of... Uh, support from government, from university. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of good things for, uh, you know, uh, university and also industry there. Mm -hmm. But still, you want to explore new things. You really need to have certain environment that uh, you feel more encouraged. There's a lot of resource around. And, and as long as you try, there's no limit. And, and uh, I, I feel that part is uh, more exciting. Yeah, yeah, there's 20 oh, years. Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You, what you said just remind me, President Joe, Joe Biden's uh, famous uh, quote, that if I can summarize the United States into one word, possibility. There is just uh, so much tremendous possibilities in this country on the land of free, and uh, which many other countries cannot, and it's just uh, absolutely stunning uh, lim unlimited potential uh, here in the United States. Yeah. Uh, you are a community leader. You know, I came to know you uh, through your uh, work uh, and leadership in the Chinese American community. And I'm so uh, grateful for your leadership and in the Chinese American community and uh, also your, uh, your uh, help and mentoring to the younger generation. So what are you most, you know, proudest thing you have done in Minnesota and for the community? I know last time we talked about your uh, leadership during the COVID, and, uh, uh, but uh, I want to know, know more about uh, your achievements uh, in the Chinese American community. Yeah, Chang, so uh, I, I would like to say I haven't done too much. Yeah, so I, I really feel I always can do more. I have very busy uh, teaching schedule, research schedule, and then a lot of uh, uh, new things always come up and need to pay attention to in terms of you know, research and uh, innovation. But at the same time, as you mentioned, uh, there's some, sometimes you feel you can do something, you can help. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's exactly maybe you refer to, uh, you know, during the pandemic years. And uh, uh, I feel there are certain things I, I can help the community, not just the Chinese American community. I think as a community as a, as a whole, right? Because I'm part of a, a community around the University of Minnesota, it's Twin City campus. As an example, every year, you know, my wife and I, we always donate to the community. Uh, through a dry, you know, they, they have a fund there and then come all kind of different, uh, different, app, you know, uh, the, 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 the usage of those uh, donations, environment and the uh, homeless, all those. We did that, you know, since we moved here every year, we feel that we, we are part of the community. But uh, during the pandemic year, if you refer to the little things I have, <laughs> very, very little is, uh, I feel we need to have you know, all the people can talk to each other and uh, there are certain things not happen in a good way. And uh, you couldn't just uh, blame one side, you know, and uh, <laughs> so, so you have to see why that happened. A lot of time is engagement, there's a d discussion. Uh, and also, you know, try to uh, show, you know, you know, you have a good wish, you really want to do the good thing. And a lot of things missing along that line, especially, uh, not just from one side, uh, you know, Chinese American community or even the mainstream, right? The so both sides need to learn from each other. So I feel my personal experience is really international <laughs> and then know how to work with different group of people. And uh, that, that gave me an opportunity. I work with a couple of young uh, Chinese American and uh, in Minnesota, we form a forum called the May Forum. Mm -hmm. May more like a May flower, you know, we really value how this country is being built. And uh, at the same time, May is a month for this uh, Asian Pacific, uh, you know, American, right, as, uh, as the heritage monks. So through this uh, forum, including we invite uh, Dr. Chang Wang Yu as part of a panelist, we try to make engagement really happen, let people talk. And also we showcase how Chinese American can do well, and then if it's really they you know engaged, and then also many things already happened in the past, right? Like uh, you know real world, real real real, uh, real world way being built from 150 years ago, right? A lot of people not do, knowing that, and then we show that, and also young generation now more like uh, they doing all those entrepreneurship is amazing. So we let them talk, and then we just provide a. Platform. I haven't done too much. All is a panel you're, job. You're yeah. too humble, Professor. You're too humble. It's uh, you, the the me uh, forum was absolutely fantastic. I was very honored to be part of it. And you, it's it's true. And uh, you you are not only you know very active in the Chinese American community, but uh, 
your influence goes beyond the Chinese American community to reach to the Asian Pacific community and the University of Minnesota community uh, and the Twin Cities community as well. Uh, as a first generation immigrant, the immigrant, and uh, which is also a human embodiment of our American dream. And may I say you have already achieved your American dream <laughs> so, uh, from the, your long bio and uh, uh, very- Oh, no, 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 not at all, yeah, I have to say okay. that. <laughs> well, but uh, 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 since you are mentoring the younger generation and uh, there are a lot of new Chinese students, scholars, and new immigrants come to the United States, come to the two cities, and uh, what advice you would give to these new immigrants and uh, just come here, try to pursue their American dream. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chang. You, 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 yeah. It's you know, very kind of words you just said. But I feel my uh, American dream is still not fully accomplished. <laughs> it's a long way to go. And but I feel very positive. You know, it's really really doing well. You know, in terms of the, everything I in, engage, that I. I I, I involved, yeah. So, but uh, there's so many big names there. Uh, you know, it's just a start from the, the inventor like Edison, like an uh, entrepreneur, like, uh, you know, the, the first uh, car manufacturing really make uh, so many people benefit, you know, mid class people benefit from that. His vision, right, the fault, right. And down to the road, even the recent year, you can see, although some people like uh, Elon Musk, some maybe had different opinion, but still, also, he set a you know bigger, bigger, bigger you know high bar there, right? So there's many, and then like uh, American scientist, maybe the first American born Nobel Prize winner is a female, Richard Feynman, right? You know, I I still follow it to to those people. I I hope I can in the next twenty years I can do something a little bit close yeah. to that. Yeah. But yeah. you know, even with that the humble experience, I I still want to see there's something uh in the past. Uh, 10, 20 years I learned through the, you know, the, from Beijing to Singapore to Minnesota and then also travel around the world. I can see uh, there's uh, so many things the people, especially the young people, they move to here. They can do much better in other places. Uh, mm -hmm. We should bless this, all, you know, really feel blessed, these uh, golden opportunities. And uh, number one, we shouldn't complain. <laughs> you always will run into difficulty. <laughs> shouldn't complain. Mm -hmm. And then you should feel this something people already work so hard to build a foundation around you, right? Otherwise, how can you have this good starting point? A lot of people forget that part, including me. I always say, you know, I came here. I'm not just built up from square. There's so many things already been there already, like my kids you know, went to the school here and a wonderful school, public school, with all those teachers, how can you have this school, right? With all the people serve those schools, how can you have kids, you know, you don't need to worry too much, you know, when they go to school, right? So I think the first thing to young generation immigrants is don't complain. You, you have to work mm -hmm. hard, you have to value what we already have here, yeah. Second part I would like to say is the most important, that is uh, what's the mindset you should have. Uh, should have so that is you need to try something new you have to do something new and uh, using the words we call the creation innovation right but uh, it's just very simple just try something new and then this uh, country really give you opportunity to try something new and uh, you can feel but you still can do again right i'm not sure many places can can be like this this uh, this really really one of the best place to give you that opportunity yeah Yes, thank you so much, Professor. That is a wonderful, wonderful advice. I will, I will follow your advice. I'm not a person who like to complain, but I think that is very important. I wish I could hear that when I was in, in my early twenties. Uh, you you spent some time in China and spent seven years in Singapore and now twenty years, almost twenty years in the United States, and. We talk about American dream, we talk about possibility, but is there anything particular strikes you the most about Americanness and something you think is very unique and interesting of the United States, distinguishable from the Chineseness and the Singaporean? Yeah, I think this, uh, again, this, uh, you know, there could be many answers along this line, right? So. Yes. Uh, different person have different uh, experience, right? And uh, 
they may have a different uh, comments or different, uh, you know, feeling about what's the difference, you know, between those uh, different countries. Uh, yeah, as a university educator, you know, professor, and uh, and then also later on, I you know, as I you just mentioned, it kind of start some entrepreneurial uh, experience, and uh, so so my 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 most uh, you know strongest feeling uh, towards to those uh, we call the uh, kind of the freedom of uh, trying things, right, mm -hmm. and then freedom try to speak. You can speak loudly. You can communicate with people. You can talk to the people. And in the way, and uh, you know, there is no much consequence. <laughs> yeah. And then, se yeah. second part, I, I believe connect to this is a uh, uh, you know is a here you do have authority, but you know, in in the academic you have authority, you know, senior professor, right? Uh, but still, the you know younger or middle aged professor or the researcher or any place, I think it, you know, people feel more equal, right? More like. Uh, you, you you know you 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 just do well and then everything's mm -hmm. good yeah <laughs> it's not just uh, look you know look into another way right yeah so that's how I feel a little bit different here yeah thank you very much that uh, uh, may I translate what you said into legalese we call it eco protection and and a due process and in this country is <laughs> very unique is uh, equality. And there is no nobleman in this country, and there are no there are hierarchies, but yeah. uh, uh, generally speaking, each human being uh, is have individual individual rights, and they can live, and they can speak freely, and with dignity and decency, which is not, you know, something we take for granted in this country, particularly the younger generation, but. Uh, in many other countries, people have to fight with their blood and tear, even life for that. And I think that is the, uh, uh, as America has been blessed with. Anyway, let's move to a little bit uh, lighter topic. And what was your life like in Twin Cities? You know, I, I envision you have a wonderful life in Singapore, but now you are in this, we are getting cold nowadays. And what do you generally you like your neighborhood in the Twin Cities? And uh, what what normally do you do? And uh, after work, uh, obviously you spend most of your time work, but I imagine you also have some uh, leisure time. You volunteer for the community, and uh, do you play uh, basketball and uh, ping pong, swim, and what do you do? Yeah, I, I'm not tall enough to play basketball and uh, yeah, I'm the short, short man, yeah, <laughs> for that way. Uh, but but uh, I played basketball while I was college student and I enjoyed it very much because it's team sports and that really you know, make you engage with other people and then, you know, compete. Yeah, doing well at that time as, the, you know, as college. And uh, now, you know, the first 10, 15 years, uh, you know, moved to here so much work and uh, we have to down in the lab and uh, you know teaching so uh, I, I couldn't do too much on the sports but in recent five you know five seven years uh, and I, I got a little bit of luxury time and uh, during the weekend now mm -hmm. so I can uh, you know kind of play a little bit of golfer golfing uh, mm -hmm. yeah so that's a one thing uh, and uh, also I watch sports one thing I learned is uh, I learned from my, my son. So he was a high school student. When he was high school, he played you know, football. Yeah. And okay. as a, as a his American, high school. American football. American football. Yeah. <laughs> not soccer. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I learned from him. And I watched, I sent him to school to, you know, he played and I watched. And then I step by step learned from that. So, uh, and I started learning to watch. And I feel, feel that's a very, very good game. Yeah. Uh, American game, yeah, basically can have a leadership, can have a teamwork, balance out, and uh, yeah. So my neighbor also, I think uh, I feel uh, my neighbors, they have a season ticket, you know, so for Vikings uh, game, the football, I guess, the NFL, yeah, and they have season ticket a lot of time. They got my 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 boy, that's many years back, and then uh, gives the, you know, let him to watch and together with the family. Yeah, so I, I have wonderful neighbors. I, I believe a lot of uh, Minnesota people feel the same way. Always, you know, drive back home and then, you know, you slow down and then talk to people around. And uh, 
yeah, you feel very warm. And uh, the same thing I, I try to do to many other people too. The, now my neighborhood start to change the, you know, from old to the young generation again. And we try to pass down those kind of things to, you know, young generation. Oh, absolutely. That, absolutely. It's uh, the way we all, when we first came here that we heard the word Minnesota nice, and uh, it's supposed to be a, a, a negative word. But uh, the more I stay here, the more I think that it's a positive. And uh, there's a very, the Minnesota people are really, really nice. And uh, Yeah, Chang, you, you're 100% right on that. I would like to see one more part on Minnesota nice, right? That's one of the reasons I stay here 20 years and maybe another 20 years. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Minnesota nice is not just uh, one word talk about people's uh, character or the way they talk to the people or, you know, work with people. It, it's, you, you can put a little bit bigger framework that that's the spirit of Midwest of America. And the Midwest part of American, a little bit different from East and West. Right. Why in English? May I see a lot of different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> different. There are many, many things in common. You know, is the creation, innovation, entrepreneur, try things new. But there are some a little bit different. People are not that rush, you know, try try to <laughs> rush to <do> things. <laughs> and yeah. here, you know, the people really like uh, work together. There's a good teamwork and uh, uh yeah. we need more like this. I have to see that. I, I walk around uh, the travel around the US. I met a lot of people, doctors, professors, you know, CEOs, and then turns out a lot of them from Midwest. And then I can see a lot of common heart from those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, do, I, I, I totally agree. And uh, we are in the right place. We're running out of time, but I do want to ask you the final question. And very quickly, you mentioned the 20 years twice, and you mentioned that you, are, you have plans for, your, for, for 20 years. So what, what do you envision? It's, it's very odd to ask uh, uh, a, a, a very accomplished professor this question, but what do you see yourself in 20 years? And what do you plan for the next, uh, next uh, phase? Yeah, I, I think I, yeah, that's a bigger plan. You know, but at the same time, I think I start, still start from small, right? I have to do step by step, you know. Uh, the big plan is uh, my research, I really lucky and feel blessed magnetic research and uh, you know work on magnetic material device research there's tons of applications and it turns out in recent 10 years and then applications really impact our society more than everyone think about that mm -hmm. and including environmental protection like you know you don't use critical materials and then you can build up the device and including uh the the we call the energy efficient computing or memory, right? Means uh, you don't need too much energy to consume the electrical, you know, power being generated worldwide to try to load down that numbers. Means in certain sense, you save our mother earth. Mm -hmm. And our research is really, really going along that line right. now. And then if we can have a certain big breakthrough down the road, I think we can help further. We already help a lot, as you read out my resume. We really help a lot through the past 20 years research at the University of Minnesota, my group and my collaborators. I think next 20 years, I feel we can do more along that line, maybe you know, even critical, uh, some, something along. But that's rely on the student, postdoc, or the good collaborator, yeah. We have a total confidence in your professor and your team. Thank you so much. Please save the world. Please save us from the climate change. Well, it's, uh, we're running out of time, but what a thrill, what a wonderful, uh, you know, occasion that we have you on the show. Thank you so much, Professor Jianping Wang, professor, scientist, innovator, inventor, and entrepreneur. Thank you, Professor. Welcome, welcome to the show, and I hope to have you back on the show again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chang, and thank you, Mark, yeah, for all the support. Yeah. Take care. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.